Is there a time in your life when you felt like the Holy Spirit was asking you or leading you to do something that was really tough? Well, I think right from the beginning of our marriage, everything seemed stacked against us because um, we, we came from backgrounds where neither one of us came from um, Christian homes and we had um, uh, lots of dysfunction. We had alcoholism and drug addiction and divorce and broken families. And, um, and we made a decision, I think, from the very beginning that we were going to um, do things differently. And that when we decided to get married, that it was going to be him and I and God in a covenant marriage. Um, it wasn't going to be just, hey, let's, you know, we knew what we, that we were going to get married, we were going to stay married, and we were going to try to do things differently than how we had grown up. It was a conscious decision to break patterns yeah. that we were in and yeah. lived in, in our childhood right. that we decided that we were going to not put our kids through. Yeah because we knew the pain of where we had come from. And, and by making that decision, we also had to decide, we knew we couldn't do that by ourselves. We knew that we could only do that with God. And so what we've done, I feel like over the past 27 years, 20 years that we've been married, is that we have um, walked day by day, trusting God, trusting the Holy Spirit to lead us in the way. Because on our own, we didn't know what the right thing to do was. On our own, um, we would make the wrong decisions mm -hmm. because that was where we came from. Mm -hmm. Like, on our own, um, this is what we had learned. This is where um, what we had seen patterned for us. So we had to totally trust, and we still have to, obviously. Mm -hmm. We still are. Um, to totally trust what the Holy Spirit is telling us every single day because we have no idea what we're doing, right? <laughs> we, I mean, really, right. like, yeah. we will just go, we don't know what we're doing, but God is so, he has shown up over and over in our lives, like, all in everything. Like, what are some examples that we can give where he's shown up in our lives? Well, let's see, um... I had a good job. We were making good money. Um, you were a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. um, and I... We had three kids. Yeah. Was a newborn. A, was in a good job, but it was very... Um, stable. It was stable, but it was very unsatisfying and just really going nowhere. And I, I got to the point where I hated it. I hated being there. And so... We talked about it and made a decision to start our own company. And that was very scary yeah. because we didn't know where money was going to come from. We had two little ones and a newborn. Three, yeah. Yeah. And a newborn. Yeah. And um, to, I had some money issues. I, I was very... <laughs> tight with money <laughs> yeah, to the point you. where I was very I just I just wanted to know where the meal was going to come from I wanted to know where the next house payment was going to come from where the next car which payment isn't was a bad from. thing but you were like hyper it like was, you were so it was a little about, over it was over the top yeah. for sure for right. sure and yeah. so I had to work through those issues and I remember when that all started I was like okay <coughs> God's gonna deal with him on this issue and I'm just gonna hold on for the ride because mm -hmm. that's what's gonna happen and yeah. it was a roller coaster and that's what it was it was a ride mm -hmm. um so, the, the the jump, the leap of faith to start your own company when you're in a a good position, I guess I should say, is is a, a scary one. Mm -hmm. And we jumped both feet and and lost everything. And lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> but but that was all part of his plan. And, and, and that was ten years ago. Yeah. And he worked. We didn't lose the business though. He worked, he worked on me yeah. with my money issues, and I've definitely come a long way oh my gosh. since then. Yeah. Um, but it's funny to see when you hold on so tight to something, mm -hmm. and you have to know where that next paycheck's coming from or where the next bill's coming from, and then he kind of molds you and works on you. 
could trust um, him. Yeah, and and you so when you so and when you have yeah. nothing and you lose everything and you finally hit that point where you have you have to trust him because mm -hmm. you have no other alternative. Right. And and then you see the change and you feel the change. And since then, I haven't really worried about where the next check is coming from. It's just I've learned in the last ten years that it's coming. So I was going to ask you, when we were talking about how you have, like, you just follow him in the, in the daily things, like, that's, that's a tough thing to do. What does that look like every day? For me, with um, homeschooling, so nine years ago, I felt like I heard him ask me to homeschool the kids. And um, so I've never felt completely comfortable with that. Like, I am good at it or I'm, you know... I, I always have struggled with, am I good enough to do this? Why are you having me do this? But I know that he's asking me to do it. So for me, what that looks like every day is um, getting up and doing what he's asked me to do. Getting up every day and um, uh, even if I don't feel like I'm good enough, I'm not good enough to do this, but he is. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, but I'm going to get the glory here, not you. So maybe you're not good enough, but um, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And um, when it all works out, and it has so far, um, then I get the glory. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, that's the whole um, purpose of everything that we do, is so that God um, is the center of our family. And that the kids know, you know, um, Everything that we do is because of him, and he um, leads us. And I've, of course, we get off track. I mean, we get off track, and and uh, I've been known to say a bad word or two. You can cut that part out if you want. <laughs> but but, um, we, uh, but we, we actually try to make a conscious decision to keep him in our routine and the so, things that we do during uh, the day yeah. the the yeah, whether like, we're at home or we're out are we or spending we're too much time with, on technology right. or are the kids watching movies that aren't appropriate or are we are we volunteering to do stuff for other people um, the way we interact with people outside mm -hmm. the house I mean we had this is a, this is a thing that um, just a huge way the Holy Spirit showed up for us is my dad um, needed, he was in a position where he couldn't take care of himself. And we made the decision that we were going to completely support him. And we were like, we don't know where the money is going to come from. And we were just talking about this a couple of weeks ago, and Nathan said, you know, we did that. We did it for over a year. We completely supported him and ourselves and his a whole nother household. And Nathan said, I don't know where the money came from. <laughs> like, we, he, God told us to do it. We did it. And somehow it just happened. Yeah, and, and now we're looking, going, going, where did all that money come from? He just made it happen. Those are the kinds of things that he does in our family and in our life all the time, you know, just one thing after another throughout our marriage. But it's because we let him be right here, you know, and he's in it. We're not, um, he's not relegated to Sunday mornings at church. He's part of our family, and he's, he is our family. That's, yeah. you know... We really um, have tried to live that way, not perfectly, and certainly there's a lot of times when we're not listening. We stumble and we want to do things our way. Because I'm a control freak. <laughs> it's been more of a struggle for me than, than you, I think, to listen, because I want things my way. I think we both want our things our, our own way. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's, it's a conscious decision to mm -hmm keep him in our family, keep him around in the things we do, in what we teach, how we work, well, and how I we think, interact. Yeah, and I think the way that I see it is, um, you know, he's, he's painting this big, huge picture. He's painting this big picture of our lives and our family. And if we get too focused on one, any one part of that, then we lose sight 
of the bigger picture. And what I think that we, what he continues to do for us is to say, wait a minute, stand back and get the bigger picture here. Because you're so focused in on this one little part that you're not really um, seeing the big picture. And so that I feel like has been really the way that we, you asked how do we really listen every day and it's trying to keep our eye on that bigger picture and not getting so focused on the fact that, you know, this is a problem in our lives right now. Well, there's a bigger picture and God has it in his hands and we can't tell. It's just blue right here. It's just a blue blob. I don't know what it's going to be, but soon it's going to be this beautiful sky and we'll look back and we'll see the, you know, the finished product. But right now we can't always see it. You know, that's how I feel like God has worked. And now, standing back 20 years, looking back, I'm like, wow, wow, he really always has it. And that gives you more confidence going forward to go, hey, I know you got it. We didn't want to do this. But I was like, hey, you got it, right? And he always has. Yeah. Have you ever heard the Holy Spirit so clearly that it was like an audible voice was telling you to do something? I was in the grocery store, and I saw this gal. This is just an example of how the Holy Spirit works. And this gal was in the um, the aisle with me, and I thought, oh, he, he, what? I'm not talking to her. Like, I, I heard God tell me he wanted me to talk to this gal. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And um, went down to another aisle. There she was again, you know. And so I started arguing with God. And I'm like, you know what? If I go out and I see her when I leave, then I'll talk to her if that's really what you want to happen, you know. And so I went outside, and there she was in her car right next to the where I had to return the buggy. And so I uh, went over to her, and I knocked on her window, and I said, I totally don't do this. <laughs> I said, but... God is telling me that he wants me to tell you something. I said, believe me, this is the first time I've ever done this. He wants you to know that he hasn't forgotten you. And her face just, oh my gosh. That was a message that she needed right at that moment. And it was amazing. And I have never, I mean, that just makes me want to follow him. Her face just, you know, she started crying and she shook her head like, I thank you. And she said, thank you so much. She knew exactly that that was a message for her. And so that was one of the times where I felt like, and then the other time was my um, mom uh, had been sick for a long time and was an alcoholic. And um, for 30 years, I had tried to get her to stop drinking, you know, teenager pouring vodka down the sink or, you know, doing whatever, trying to get her into rehab, whatever I could do. And obviously it was her choice and there wasn't um, a lot that I could do. And so um, five years ago, I went to bed and I had never done this before. And I said, um, I was saying my prayers and I said, God, I know you love her more than I do. And I'm just going to put her in your hands because I can't do anything, and I love her, but I know that she belongs to you, and you love her more. And I went to sleep, and the next thing that I heard was a knock at the door, and it was a policeman telling me that she had passed away. Mm. And I thought, how good are you that you gave me that moment, that prayer? He quickened me to know that um, in my heart I needed to give her over to him. You know, he didn't take her because I let go. I mean, I don't have that kind of control, obviously. But um, he knew he was going to take her, and he quickened my heart to let go of her so that um, I would, and, and by saying that prayer, I knew he had her. I knew he was in charge of it, and I have had so much peace around that and know that she has peace. So that's just a couple of things that um, are you know more specifics that have happened in my my life that really were like wow holy spirit you know mm -hmm. so what would be the first step in making god the center of your family on a day-to-day -day basis i think the simplest thing is just ask him to be with you just mm -hmm. a simple prayer you know holy spirit please 
you know, enlighten me and, yeah. and come into me yeah. and help me. He needs I to think be the one that, that mm -hmm. does it, not so, you, but yeah. him. Yeah, simply yeah. just, just uh, asking, yeah. asking him to be in your life. And then being real, like, you know, don't be, I mean, church, we love church, we love like with Church of Christ, and we, we do love church, but be real. It's not about church. Church is where we can all come and we can um, uh, celebrate that we are followers of Christ and that um, the Holy Spirit is, is indwelling us. That's where we come to celebrate that with others, but it's not about... So um, I think being real with your kids. Just We are so real with those kids. <laughs> we, we, try, we try to be real with them. And when we screw up, we're real with them, you know, and they see the Holy Spirit working through that. We're not putting on a show for them. We're, we love them, and we're real, and then when we screw up, we're real, you know, so. Do you have examples of specific times that were really hard that you went through? Sometimes when I'm at home, I, uh, I get scared, so I kind of worry. So when you get scared, like what do you do? Do you freak out or I, do you? I, I turn to God mm. and I just pray and then uh, I, uh, I just trust in him and then it just goes away. That is really great to hear from a 10 year old. So whenever you are thinking about that, what is it, like do you, do you pray and then immediately you just feel better or does it take time or? It kind of takes time. Hmm. Do you guys like, do you pray before meals? Do you pray? I mean, are there some, a lot of times that you pray just during the day? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys read the Bible at home a lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there days that things don't go like you intended and maybe you don't do all those things? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's kind of how life goes, right? Mm hmm so if there's another 10-year-old out there, because I know there are lots of them, or even younger or older, and they're thinking, hmm, I'm not sure, like, I don't know about this whole thing, what would you say to them? Do it for God. <gasps> yeah. um, Isabella wasn't feeling well, so do you have a story that you could tell for her? Maybe a story where God was using her specifically? Just a week or two ago at Western Airs that made me feel so proud of her, and... Um, and showed me that um, as a parent, it was one of those moments where I'm like, yes, you know, like, wow, I'm so proud that she was listening to God's voice in that moment. Um, so, well, I'm not going to get specific about names and stuff, but there's, uh, she's in Western Airs and she rides horses, and there's a gal on her team who may not be quite as mature as some of the other girls, and... Um, she was walking with two other gals um, back from her ride, and um, one of them said something about um, so and so is an idiot. And the other little girl said, you know, kind of agreed with her, you know. And Bella said, um, that's rude, and kind of stood up for the other girl that wasn't there to speak for herself. Um, and said, you know, she may not be um, on the same page that we are as far as maturity and stuff, but she's a nice person. And these were little girls that were, not little, but I mean, they were teenage girls. And um, they, they were the cool girls, you know, but Bella was standing up for a girl who wasn't there and was um, maybe not considered one of the cool girls. And so that was just one of those moments where I was really proud of her, you know, for listening to that voice because it costs something to do that, mm -hmm. you know, and especially when you're 12 years old to be able to stand up and um, have the courage and the strength of character to say, you know what, no, you're not, you don't call somebody an idiot. They're not even here to defend themselves. And um, she knows that we just, you know, God doesn't, uh, you know, God loves everyone, and hopefully that's kind of the message that we've taught our kids, and um, they respect other people. 
Do you have a specific example where you knew that God was real, but also he was just real close to you in a very tangible way? Um, the end of 2012 or 2013, I'm not sure uh, which one of those it was, I got a uh, double lung infection. Um, I don't remember the technical name of the infection, but uh, I was in and out of the hospital for like a month and taking meds and the worst part was probably getting the IVs every like every week I got a new IV because I was in and out but um, they had to put me under to like do this surgery and like that really freaked me out um, and like the doctor was like rough with me and stuff so like in the last moment I just like totally submitted to God and just said uh, please take care of me and like all of a sudden like I was just like very calm and stuff and then I woke up So, so about how old were you do you remember uh, 12 or 13? Wow, so how did you know cuz for a 12 or 13 year old? I think that's a big that's a big thing to like really think of God in such a personal way that you Say things like just I'm just gonna give it over to you and let you take care of me. So how did you know to do that? Um, I can't remember ever having like a certain moment when I um, became a Christian. I can remember like some of my first prayers. But like I've always believed in God and like have known that He was there for me. And I've just always known just the way like my parents taught me, I guess. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to someone, um, maybe that's 12 or 13, or maybe the age that you are now, um, and what would you say to them if they were going through something similar? Probably just tell them to stick with God, no matter how hard or easy or boring or crazy things could get, just to keep on following that path. We all go through tough times in our lives. Why do you think that is? When winter time comes, usually people think that trees are dead. That like all like the sap, like, like not sap, all the leaves fall off and everything just seems dead. And we go through times like that in our own Christian spiritual life. Um, but when winter time comes, that's when um, the tree gets stronger. Like I don't think it's I I, I don't know if I'm totally correct in everything I'm saying, but uh, someone told me that the trees get stronger and they, um, like, that's when the time when the wood is made and, like, you know, when you, like, snap a tig, twig and, and spring or whatever and, like, it's all green. Um, if a tree just grew like all th that all the whole time, eventually it would just collapse. Um, in our own uh, winter, the time when it's toughest for the trees is actually when they get the strongest. So in our own lives, when things get really hard, like it's toughening us up for a time, like you could say training almost, we're getting stronger 